Hi, welcome to Shop Starters. I'm Rosie. <laughs> and I'm Kate. Hi. And it's been a really, really long time, but we are finally here to talk about at least book one, <laughs> The Fairy Queen. Mm. Um, so how have you gone with The Fairy Queen so far? It's a big read, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's a lot. It, it, it's yes. a lot. It's beautiful and it's fun, but it's you have to concentrate the whole time because it's yeah. not... It, you know, it's not easy language for us, obviously. And it's yeah, kind of that's... laden with, with references and words, that, you know, vocab that you don't even know, that's really unfamiliar, and references to things that you don't necessarily just know and you have to go and look up. So it's not, it, that's why it takes so long. It's a long read. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's a long read. Yeah, mm. I feel like every single thing has like some sort of symbolic meaning that you have to yeah. think about. Yeah, and his spelling is really weird. Um, we should yeah. talk about what what Spencer, like who Spencer is, Edmund Spencer, who wrote the Fairy Queen, and what yeah. he's trying to like achieve, and then maybe, um, yeah, that will <laughs> help us to um, like explain why it is kind of complex. Basically, it was a guy who decided from like really early on in his life that he wanted to be bigger than Chaucer, and that was a very big, big goal obviously yeah. <laughs> as we know yeah yeah okay. he wanted to be the greatest English poet of his age and so that maybe makes him different stuff. from other people we've done before in that it appears that people we've been doing so far looking at so far have not necessarily had that as their ambition so much as yeah. you know to be a writer per se as to write about the idea <laughs> if that makes sense yeah. so the, the other other writers have been more about doing something that they found entertaining or, you know, there's a curiosity. But this is a really interesting kind of change, I suppose, someone yeah, actually aspiring really, to be a writer. Yeah, a really clear purpose. Um, yeah. And he, he spent, like, most of his life being desperate to get um, patronage from yes. Elizabeth. Um, Elizabeth and first. He made, Elizabeth I. And yep. he made good friends with um, Sir Walter Rayleigh. Yes. Who then was able to kind of get him in with the Queen. So, so <laughs> which feels like it's a, that's a fairly political move or strategy, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you wanted yeah. to get to the Queen, then going via Sir Walter was possibly a good plan. Yeah. I was quite lucky yeah. that he made friends with him. Um, but it's weird because he he has a lot, he's, like, got a lot of conflicting views I think and then that and that comes across in the book as well and it's quite confusing to see to like understand what he's actually trying to say because on the one hand yes. he's really like pandering to Elizabeth and the, on the other he was kind of like rebellious about England as well like he was very pro-Irish for a start. So do you think that he was trying to because he had this game plan which was to be more famous than Chaucer and also to have and the, the Queen Elizabeth and to, to gain Queen Elizabeth's patronage that the message part <laughs> has been sublimated and he's a little bit there. so like the so religious imagery and stuff is a bit confused at times like it's yeah yeah and so he's almost working out what his message is as he goes yeah I think so hmm and we can't ever be totally sure that, like, the symbolism as, is as straightforward as it sort of seems to be, I think is the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, in terms of the actual writing part of it, he really, he loved the old epics. So, like, um, Virgil's Aeneid was his, like, favourite that thing was, ever. That, And that was what he started with, wasn't it? That was his inspiration. Yeah. And he's, and he's, quite he's, quite he's open about that in his letter to, to Walter Raleigh, isn't he? Mm, yeah 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 he makes it very clear that that's the that's the goal so he thinks mm. he's basically saying that English language is missing this great epic that we've had in Latin and Greek yes. etc going to go and back so to that he's going to fill that, that void yeah. Yeah. yeah but kind of making everything um in really weird like archaic language as well yeah it's sort of like a false <laughs> archaic <laughs> language that he's using to try to put himself back in the canon of yeah. the time um and but i found myself being confused as to whether that was in fact 
what the language was like you know what I mean or if he was kind of yeah no it's more it's intentionally supposed to be like he made it more archaic than like and obviously what it's, it's so difficult now but it's yeah but some of it was like he made up words and things to sound older than it is because I think he was also he was really annoyed that English language is becoming more common you know like yeah. the church was, was using um like common speech more often and things like that and he really wanted English to have a bit more of a he wasn't really into all the um like progress that we were getting from travel no and things like that the world was opening up and he wasn't really keen on that he wanted to go back to like England as his origin when the language was pure and <laughs> and yeah all that like Chaucer kind of time but mm. he yeah ended up making it a little bit more archaic and strange than it ever actually was and do you find that when you we're reading it. Have you found it to be less entertaining than Chaucer? It's less, so it's not funny. I think it's, it's missing yes, the humour part. There's, no, there's the nothing problem. funny about it. That's right. It's, yeah. It takes it's itself funny. seriously. Yeah, it's a great yeah. adventure. Yeah. Um, so it's basically, it is a massive adventure story. So we're following, um, in, in book one, we're just following the one night. But I think just the like, one, the, the Red Cross one, aren't we? The, yeah, so we're following a knight who's on a quest from the Fairy Queen. Yes. <laughs> And, and it's just like, oh, it's a quest story with monsters and princesses and sorcerers and all of that sort of thing, mm. which is a lot yeah. of fun. Like, I do enjoy that, but there's, there is no humour. And what I think no. is interesting is... Well, no, um, because the, the virtue that, that is being promoted is holiness. Yes. So it's not... There's a lot not, of religious stuff. There's not a lot of room for humour there, really. Yeah, it's, it's the chivalry, the virtue, the, um, the faith. Like yes. it's, it's those kind of key things, not not yes. humor, not your everyday person either. Like Chaucer was looking at people who are who are you know, average, normal like representatives yeah. of society. Yeah. yeah, different parts of society, and this is not that at all. This is mythical no. um, Arthurian yeah. figures. So yeah, yeah not not the same yeah, at so all. They're not aspect. they're not accessible figures the way Chaucer's are, and so Definitely. yes, there's not that um, for every man vibe going on. That oh god. No. No, <laughs> it's more aspirational, I suppose. So I think that I read that Spencer was inspired by Ariosto, Ludovico Ariosto, who is an Italian epic poet mm -hmm. who does a work like this called Orlando Furioso, which I've read. It's in two volumes, um, like <laughs> kind of like this size, but there's two of them. But yeah. and it's the same sort of thing, like knights and stuff on a big quest. But it's funny. It's got a lot more humor in it. It's a, a little bit more, um, it's a bit more rounded, I think, in what it's doing, like in terms of mm -hmm. the characters, that there, there's more humour, there's more like women <laughs> who are not, like who are stronger as well. These women are kind of sad. What about Lady Una? I think she's boring. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Una's well, a victim. <laughs> I think, yeah, and, and we get introduced to her. She's wearing a big black coat. A big back cape over the top of it, like a shroud. So Una, I think, is for, like each of the characters kind of represents something specific, right? And a lot of the characters are um, their actual names indicate what they represent, so it's not that like complex. But for mm -hmm. Una, I think she is supposed to be like the church, the religion, the good right. church. Yeah. So Elizabeth's church, um, yeah. the church being Protestant. Protestant. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Whereas there's a lot of criticism of Catholicism throughout it, so yes. Una represents like purity and everything yeah. but and that's yeah. fine but she's not got any fun part of a character <laughs> she's very no. much just the church so she's not she's like, certainly a strong... not like the wife of bath is she <laughs> no no and, and i was talking about when i was mentioning like a land of furiosa i mean the women in that were actual like warriors and things yes. so you know yes. very yeah. different kind of vibe oh yeah there's no war woman warrior vibe here uh, una's no. just like the you know damsel in distress a lot of the time so but yeah, but with a bit of smarts about her. Oh yeah, yeah, she's smart, but she's yeah, so she's okay on, in the brains department, <laughs> you know. Her, <laughs> but but she's not a physical warrior woman mm -hmm. at all. No. Yeah, and then we have um, Red Cross, who is, um, is actually St George. Yes, we find out later, um, and that kind of makes sense with the Red Cross. But yes, also, yeah, that sort of um, like the bloody cross, like Jesus and stuff. I suppose. Yeah, so uh, yes, lots of allusions. Yep, and parallels. Yeah, yeah. And then who else do we have? Weird characters. We have. Um, well, oh, we have Archimago the magician. Yeah, the like yeah. Um, we have 
the dwarf. Oh, I've just remembered, like, Rosie, that, and the weird thing about Una. Don't when we meet her, mm. hasn't she got a lamb on a leash? Yeah. Like, yeah. what is that? It's weird. And then she's also riding a donkey for, like, most of it. Mm. <laughs> so, I found that really yeah. kind of odd. And know? then she makes friends with a lion at one point too. Yeah, she's quite, actually, like, she's, there's some pretty weird mixed she's references. kind of a bit of a Snow White kind of figure, actually. She yeah. makes friends with all the animals in the forest. <laughs> yes, yes. And, yeah. and this is all about her purity. And then um, we have Duessa, yeah. who is um, supposed to be, I think that means duplicity or something like that. Just yeah. Something similar to that. Um, yeah. Who's the evil one uh, who, like, like seduces um, Red Cross and names and pretends to be, pretends to be Fidesa. So she disguises herself as Fidesa, which is loyalty, but it's like irony. Yep. Because she's and not. He, and he's just a bit <laughs> stupid and can't tell and the he, yeah, he, yeah, he's really not the smartest. He gets into no. all sorts of situations. Well, that's like, what why? I mean. I mean, at least <laughs> Una seems to have some sort of intellect yeah. and wit about her, whereas oh, Red Cross doesn't seem too smart. Not that smart. He gets into a no. lot of bad situations where you're like, hmm. That could have mm. been avoided. But I also think that's the <laughs> whole point. It's like it's his journey. I think it's his religion. It's supposed to be like an allegory for his religious journey. So he's yes. like he's being tempted off the path kind of thing. I find, I always find that really frustrating because mm. as a reader, I mean, any story where there's this temptation and the person succumbs to it, it's quite irritating because it's obvious they're not meant to. I mean, you know, yeah. they should, and then you're going, oh, why can't you possibly see that this is a problem? I always find oh, that it's really like, frustrating. It's explicitly called out in this as well. Like the um, the narrator will say to the audience, oh, but we know that this we is know actually just guys stupid guys yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're like, oh, great. <laughs> cool. I, yeah. I get really frustrated with that. I, actually, even I remember reading Thomas Hardy, same sort of thing, that just so frustrating. Like you just... Yeah, the characters just... Clearly make stupid don't... Choice. Do that terrible choice, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think with this one, it's it's interesting. It's because we are removed from the characters because we're not they're not accessible, and because you're not kind of feeling like I'm going with him and he's an underdog, and I can relate to that. It, then that it does cause frustration rather than feeling yeah. for him or feeling the terrible tension. You know what I mean? I could. Do you think I that if we were that. bringing it back in the time when I don't know, um, there would be more interest, like you know, really, the religious conflict is more relevant or something. That yeah, maybe, we yes. would, like we would relate more to him, maybe and struggles potentially mm. because it's supposed like you would think it's supposed to be that he's like he's not a perfect guy, right? That he's he's flawed. He's been. I know, but instead I'm thinking that's kind of a bit flat, and that's he's a bit flat. <laughs> And that's a bit of a not, problem. I mean, yeah, it was not the most exciting. I think it was more the like the weirdness was the interesting part, like the weird um, situations that come up. Like, oh, and now we've got another a weird monster who, when he like the first bit when he the first monster that he meets when he kills that monster and then its children start sucking its blood. Oh yes, and they they explode. Yeah. Okay. Truly gross. Like, yeah. Like exploding. <laughs> like it's just really weird stuff. And then, yep. um, and then there's a bit with the vomit, like the monster vomits up, like books and papers. They're supposed to be like it's supposed to be like the church and all the like crap that they are espousing as far as like all of the like extra stuff that they, you know, yep, that they throw at people. So Truly, yeah, it's supposed to be yeah. like the Catholic church rather, not the not the Protestant church. So it's supposed to be about all of the like lies and all that sort of stuff that the Catholic church is throwing at people. Mm. But yeah, like weird little situations like that that you're just like, huh, didn't expect that <laughs> to happen. <laughs> yeah. So I think that was the most like fun part was just what is going to happen next. Yes. It just keeps getting all these weird scrapes, meeting all these weird characters. And then Prince Arthur turns up. Yes. Um, and saves the day because um, of he comes at the point where um, where our knight Red Cross has managed to like get himself stuck in a cave where he's been <laughs> like he's been like drugged to be lazy or something like he so that he doesn't yeah. want to leave this cave. Yeah, and then Arthur has to come and get him out. I mean, <laughs> you, have like, to, you have to imagine you would want a bit of a lie down if you'd been through quite yeah, so many. But it has all this coffee. imagery of him like being you know super pale because he hasn't seen the sun. 
mm. and stuff like that because he's just been in this cave for a while yeah it's um it's weird and then and then yeah they um there's this whole like romance bit with Arthur and the Red Cross Knight yeah it's kind of fun yeah Oh, so we should explain that we've got cantos in this. So it's a this one is the self-contained book. Yes, yeah, so you can just read it one. And you can actually it read it on its own. Yeah. Yeah. And and but the book itself, book one, is made up of how many cantos are there? 12, 14? Twelve. I think there's yeah, always twelve cantos in all of the books. Are there? Twelve. Okay. Yeah. And they, so you know, um, it's quite substantial. It's like a little novella. Yeah, so uh, the set Spencer wanted to do more, like this is unfinished as well. <laughs> so <laughs> it's six, um, six. Do we know? Books. We don't know how long it took, do we? I do don't we think we do know how long it took. Does it say that? I don't know. I think I it was, it was being released periodically, like he released a book at a time for a while. It's so so it was not um, published in one volume. And it is a yeah. real feat if you think about it. It is so dense. And to maintain that rhyme scheme. Yeah, which you know, is his own Spencerian yeah, sonnet. Yeah, to form. create an interlocking kind of rhyme and keep to it. And invent your own words and stuff as well. Yeah, as your that's, like it's self. a lot of work that goes into it. Oh, yeah. Huge well, amount. If you're trying to rival Virgil, then you're going to need to put some effort in. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, so um, yeah, but that's why I'd, do like to know. I'd like to know how long it took him because it has to have been a really long time. I would love to know that, but I haven't read that anywhere. So maybe we all don't know. Well, I think we I think we do know, but I just don't know if no one's called it out. But I know that they were released like as he was writing them. Like he would he wrote book yeah. one and then he like released book two like later. So like over a, a bit like yeah. Charles Dickens kind of thing in Yeah, But I'm not sure yeah. like what the period was, if we actually have that anywhere. But yeah, he wanted to write twelve or twenty-four of these. I don't know. <laughs> these were like special numbers, I suppose. But um yeah. Well like he wanted hours to of the day or something. Yeah, like twelve um at least 12 books he's only written six and then there's a few cantos we call them mutability cantos at the end that I mm. think are like bits and pieces that he wasn't like finished with that we do have so yeah it was a big um project that's for sure yeah absolutely but there's so much in it and this is only book one but yeah. as you say you can read it and not really remember certain Canto is very well at all. That's what I'm sort of struggling with actually at the moment. So I'm reading it. Um, firstly, the spelling is really hard because it's not. Yeah. Um, it's not in like normal modern spelling. No. Um, and, and then that on top of sometimes there's a weird um, archaic word, so you don't know when you're like trying to puzzle out what the spelling is actually for. Absolutely. You don't even yeah. know if you recognize at the end. So you know, it's a bit tricky. But the way I'm reading it is um, reading while listening. So normally I do one or the other. Yeah, I Same. do listen to a lot of books. And this is one too hard to listen to by itself. You can get the so. poetry of it. As, no, but you don't get the story. That's right. You you hear the the rhythm, obviously, and and the rhyme, mm -hmm. and it's and it and that's very 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 good to hear that. You know, it is really lovely to listen to that. But yeah. it doesn't. The story is really hard to grasp, and and hang on to. You just can't. Just so you need to see, you have to see the words at the same time as hearing them. But I think the two things together, it, that's definitely the best way to go. Because just reading it's it on its way. own, you miss a lot as well, I think. Yeah. But when you read, when you see and hear it, it's a much it's better. It's a good combo. Yes. It's slow. Like it, it does slow you down, obviously. Um, yes. But I think it's the only way that it's working for me to actually like, retain what's happening. But I'm also finding that um, because so much happens <laughs> and there yes. are so many characters. It's things, all action um, the whole time. That's right. Yeah. So if I do put it down for a little while, I do forget where I'm up to. Um, yeah. When I come back to it, I have to like, kind of remind myself of what has just happened in the previous canto. So it's a little bit tricky in that sense because it's just so epic, I suppose. Yeah, but I guess that's right. That's the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's fun. I am, I'm enjoying it. I mean, I'm still reading book two. I'm towards the end of book two now. So yeah. I should be like finished with that one soon. I think it's, it is going to be a slow read. Yes. It's not something you could just go, oh, I'll read this the night before yeah. we're talking. It's but not I do like kind of like it because it is um, – 
well I like the epic part of it I do like Same. the big adventure story so that part is cool um yeah. yeah I do really like it and the language is is great yes but I mean that's right not. we're not doing it justice really in in terms of I mean it is beautiful and it is rich and, and really descriptive like yeah. insane really description. really descriptive yeah yeah. Of the landscape, like beautiful descriptions of the landscape, but then also um, really violent imagery. Yes. Whenever yes. there's any kind of battle, it's like it's actually kind of shocking how gory it gets sometimes. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. so okay. it's very Game of Thrones in that regard, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. It's not high, like it's not holding back at all. Oh, no. Sure. no, 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 no. What did you think about the ending of book one? Because I, I thought it was quite sad. Very sad. Yeah. And, um, so he, you know, he does his quest. As we all know, like we know that he's going to succeed in the quest. Like that's kind of what you expect from this kind of a premise, it's right? So he, to, yeah, it would be all wrong if he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He does what he set out to do. And then at the end, you think he's going to be able to marry Una. And um, and Una's father is all for it, being like, yes, yep. good, go ahead. Right. I'm going to marry Una. And then he's like, oh, but I've still got six years to serve the fairy queen. So I have to go on and do more adventures so, for her. So see you years later. So bye. I mean, I hope that during these books he does eventually come back to her in future ones. Like we come back to the Red Cross Knight surely, and he yeah, surely. eventually gets to be with Una. But since it's not finished, I'm not sure. Like maybe that was supposed no, to be the end we of don't, the book. No, we don't know. No, no. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. Um, but, yeah, I am enjoying it. I think it is – I would like to know how many people have actually read, read book one and also the rest of it because I know it's something that, like, people study a lot. And I feel like this is a text that would really benefit from studying because – you have the time to actually analyze yeah, like, and, and talk about what all, all the these symbolism are and yeah yeah and the symbol. like un That's unpack it a little bit more but i wonder even when you are studying it you probably don't read the whole thing you probably read i bet you don't it. you would just go to let's look quickly now at canto nine yeah. and yeah you it, it's too much to read yeah, i think it slow, is you know as a group if you were to sure. like properly unpack it all i think you could spend a lifetime doing that so mm. Of course, you can read it just on the um, surface level because it is a big adventure. But I feel like you'd be missing out a lot if you don't like sit down and think about it for a bit. Like if you don't think about the symbolism, you're still going to get a story. Oh, totally, yeah. But I do, but, yeah. I do love that. I like the descriptions in um, Canto Twelve. Yeah. I, I, yeah. He ceased, and then yeah, this bit. But then when it says, um, "Upon a bed of roses, she was laid as faint through heat or dight to pleasant sin, and was arrayed, or rather disarrayed." all in a veil of silk and silver thin that hid no whit her alabaster skin, but rather showed more white, if more might be, more subtle web arachne cannot spin, nor the fine nets which oft we woven see of scorched dew do not in the air more likely flee. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, yeah, it's really rich, isn't it? Very romantic kind of imagery. Yeah, yeah. She couldn't be um, pure. Yeah, she's just this image of purity, which is very nice. But um, and that I suppose yeah. was all for Queen Elizabeth's benefit. Yes, Queen Elizabeth not so much in this at this point. So I thought the Fairy Queen was going to be a more active character, but it seems to just like referred to. It's not on yeah. the stage yeah. at this point. I wonder if, if she does come into it a bit more. Like, oh yeah, she is supposed. To, I don't know if we explicitly said that, but obviously the Fairy Queen is supposed to refer to Elizabeth. Yes, that's like the biggest. Allegory um, yes. but we haven't, yeah, we haven't seen much of her yet. We've just had talk no. about her. Yeah, but all so. the but the whole idea of being virtuous and pure, and you yeah. know, untouched, all of that. Yeah, I guess there's there's parts of Elizabeth referenced in other characters throughout. So, mm. yeah, definitely parts of Bruno, I would say, mm. and um, another thing that we didn't talk about was in the final battle with the dragon. At the yes. End. Yes. That I think is really symbolic. So um, he's fighting this dragon. He's losing, like most of the time. Um, I feel like it lasts. It lasts several days, and I'm wondering if it lasts actually like three days. Like, is three days the date, the amount of time that Christ was or dead before he rises? <laughs> I think that this like um, whole fight with the dragon is kind of like that because he also keeps falling into this um, fountain this magical like well thing that restores him like so the dragon keeps winning he keeps um wounding red cross red cross falls into a well 
like I feel a couple of times, not just one time, <laughs> and gets restored overnight and he like rises again. So he does a whole like Jesus transformation thing at that point. Yes. And there's also yeah. um in that battle, there's also a tree, like the tree of life. Yeah, the tree of life. That yes. the dragon can't come close to. So it's all really super religious imagery in the very, final battle. Very, very, very religious. Yeah. And I feel like Red Cross Knight basically becomes Jesus towards the end but um in a symbolic way obviously not specifically no. <laughs> um I, well, I thought the actual fight scene itself was really weird until I realized that it was just like it's got to be this big symbolism thing because of all the other battles that he's fought it was just really weird that at this particular point he's failing so badly mm. and it's not like that like he, it's not that interesting there's a lot of breaks in the flow I suppose it doesn't have that whole like heightened drama because then he's just like dying and then coming back again and again so it doesn't never quite gets to completion I suppose yeah there's a lot to unpack in it yep. basically mm. yeah honestly it is something that I mean that's it must be a life's work and it must be a life's work unpacking it yeah that's kind of fun well absolutely because we are doing it because we want to as opposed to being pushed into it studying it. Yeah. yeah I wonder how many people actually enjoy it when they study it <laughs> well, I, yeah, I think it could get, no, I think, it, I mean, you could have a lot of fun with it, but. Depends on the lens that you're, you're viewing through, I think, a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. And the and this is a lot of religious stuff, like if you're not very interested in the Protestantism versus Catholicism thing, mm. it's going to be a lot to yeah. deal with because I feel like the, the imagery, there's just so much of the symbolism, it's kind of like smacking you in the face if you have to like say <laughs> Wait, I imagine as a student, if you're like trying to pick out every part where it references the oh, Catholic it, church, that would yeah. drive you insane. Yeah, that, <laughs> like, that honestly yeah. would be hours and hours Another of one. through. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. It's saying it's, the same thing over and over again. Anyway, I think it's really great. I think um, in the Norton, we, so in we the had Norton the full book strange. one. Yeah, because we have all of book one, but then it's a bit confusing actually because we end with Canto 12 of book one. And then we go yep. to Canto 12 of Book 2. So yeah, it's actually so think, a little bit um, strange. The next bits, so I'm going to be reading the full thing, but yep. the next bits we will just do just do Canto 12 of Book 2. Yes. Um, so yep. I will read Canto, I'll read Book 2 and then we can talk about the end of it because that yep. is Canto, Canto 12 the last 12. chapter. Yep. And then I think it also gives us a bit from Book 3. I think well. that's right. That is that Canto we'll 6. Say, yep, yep. Canto 6 of Book 3, so we'll also look at that one as well. Yep. Okay. Oh, and 11. You get two. You get 6 and 11, 11. and 12 of Book 3. Okay. You get more of Book 3. And then... Okay. Um, so Book 3 is the one about chastity, isn't it? Yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah. And the second book... Oh, the second is, book is, is about... Um, so Guyon. It's a different yeah. night. Um, yeah. So Guyon... And, but Archimago comes back, I can tell you that much. Yep. He's there from the beginning <laughs> of book two. Book two is interesting. Anyway, I don't want to spoil anything, but no, it kind of starts no. with, um, with uh, like a, a rumour about, um, about Red Cross, like an, uh, an untrue rumour being spread about Red Cross. <laughs> and then... Fake news, Rosie. Yeah, fake news. <laughs> then it goes on from there. But it was kind of interesting that we like we pick up a different character through yeah. this, like rumor. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's what we'll be doing. The next like couple of episodes we will do on the rest, the other parts of the Fairy Queen book two and three, and then the mutability cantos as well. Um, yes. And then you know we actually skipped one by accident. We got too excited about the Fairy Queen and we skipped something. What did we skip? You. Were. <laughs> we skipped the Shepherd's Calendar. Oh, whoops. So we can maybe come back to that after the Fairy Queen because now we're just too excited about the Fairy Queen. Yeah, I, and also I don't think you can stop start Fairy Queen. I think... No, no, we need to keep going. We need to do... You need, it needs to be done as, as a whole to get the whole epic thing. Yeah. That's the whole point of, the, of it. Yeah. It's interesting, so isn't we'll, it? That the, ep, like the idea of epic sagas probably went away for a long, long time, you know, a long while, but... It's definitely staged a comeback, hasn't it? The concept so, yeah. of an epic saga. And I wonder, you know, it's interesting timing why of how that's happening. Very, like, you know, in terms of where we're at in the world, uncertainty yeah. and, un, you know, wanting oh, to feel always... secure. 
Yeah, but no, but big uncertainty. We want to be secure about things. And so epics are a really good way to lose yourself and and kind of go back to old um, values, I suppose, traditional, mm. very traditional kind of values. And that's certainly what this is all about. Yeah. I don't know. I had a whole different idea about Spencer before I started this. What did you think it was going to be like? I didn't understand the epic nature of it, just how epic it was. <laughs> and I didn't yeah. understand the... Um, modeling on other countries i didn't know that that was what this really was i uh, you know i really I had such a, a poor background in it you know my knowledge yeah. was so poor but it's not the way i imagined it which is yeah i guess because i'd always in, in you know at school we would talk about spencer very briefly and you sort of talked about spencer when you talked about shakespeare so well, similar, they are similar in the sense of like they both are redefining the English language, really. Um, but then they're nothing alike as well in the actual like uh, themes and things. Like, yeah, it's all quite and, and the whole yeah. execution uh, is completely different. Yeah. And you know, Shakespeare's sonnets were like you know, sonnets, so yeah, on somehow, the phone, not like a bigger poem, yeah, yeah. So, somehow in my mind, I had kind of not really processed what Spencer really did. I think that's the same with me. I think I kind of thought that, like, I knew Spencer was a poet, but I, I think before I knew much about, like, The Fairy Queen and stuff later on, I thought it was just, like, individual poems, not a big but epic me work. Too. And I that's what I mean. Story, Shorter, of it. self-contained yeah. poems. I didn't imagine this huge epic saga. Thing, yeah. No, I hadn't really I knew that it that. was, like, really hard to want. Like, people have always talked about Spencer as being a challenge. Yeah. But I realize it also had like a big story because that kind of brings more interest right like I don't know when I think yes. about things that I've like it's challenging to me usually like layer. poetry on my own yeah that's more challenging to me than a story yeah <laughs> so no I had yeah. no real appreciation so now I'm kind of getting mm -hmm. I guess now it makes sense why he you know is so lauded so yeah. he did achieve that that's for sure yeah oh yeah he achieved it but I think it's just so funny that like He's done it in this really unnatural way. <laughs> well, I think in a way it's a little bit sad because he is, everybody knows his name and everybody kind of thinks of Spencer as great, you know, it's a great artist and great work. But the go-to, I think, still for most people would be awesome. Chaucer. Yeah. He has not, he has not beaten Chaucer. Like, no. Like, he's not said. No. So it's all this work, all this... <laughs> huge work and I still this think pandering to Elizabeth yeah and he still hasn't quite got to got what he wanted no and I, well, I wouldn't even I would even say probably like you know you said um everyone knows Spencer but I I would actually say these days like unless well, you're pursuing English literature at um, university level I don't think many people actually do know Spencer. I never heard about Spencer in high school and the only reason I know about Spencer is from my own literary like interest <laughs> not, so I never taught, see, I, I am sure I was told often of Spencer and, yeah, yeah, definitely. And the Fairy Queen, yeah, we all knew about the Fairy Queen. And it's not that easy to get hold of the Fairy Queen. So that's another no. part of it. I think, um, you know, Penguin does this nice edition. Mm. I don't think I've seen any other publishers do an edition of the Fairy Queen, like currently, that is still in print. And when you go into an average bookstore, you cannot find the Fairy Queen, whereas you can always find something by Shakespeare. Yeah, or Chaucer. Like it, you have to yeah. like order in this copy. Mm. <laughs> like it was just not, it was not just there in the bookstore. So, mm. it's interesting. yeah, he's not, he's not become as famous as I think he wanted to be. No, poor man, but, poor man. So I need to read more about him now. I, I'm actually wanting to know in his of, life. Yeah, I want to know a bit more. Yeah. I definitely would like to know how long this all took. I wonder yeah, if any. Of our, I wonder up. if any if any of our um, listeners know more. Yeah, please let us know if you do know more about Spencer's life, um, in particular, and the creation of this massive work. <laughs> yeah, the toil. Yeah, I mean, because I he like did to other things too. We're going to see other stuff that he was also working on. So he just like, how did he have time? He. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Don't> no. <know. laughs> because yeah, we just we just mentioned that we haven't done the shepherd's calendar, and that's like that came before this. 
And then there's um there's lots of other things at the end of this. We're not done with Chaucer. There's other poems that he's done that we're doing. You as mean well. Spencer? No, not Chaucer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, poor Spencer. Don't do that, <laughs> Spencer. That's mean. <laughs> yeah. Rub but then there's like other, there's other poems in here as well that we'll be looking at. So like he, he wasn't just a one hit wonder. No. He didn't play no, not, at all. not at all. He seemed to see how he had the time to do all of that. <laughs> Anyway. Well, we'll do some more um, investigating and some more. We will do some more investigating. So it'll be interesting because now I am going to read the Norton version, which is the chopped version of book two, yeah. and you're going to read the whole of book two. Yeah, I'm up to I'm up to Canto ten. <laughs> so um, and got, I'm starting. I've got to be starting with twelve. So yeah, do so you know the you, ending? You do some speed reading. Get to twelve. Will be interesting to like compare them all once I'm done with all six books. To see which book actually that will be good to see if we can trace yes some yeah, being better than others yeah. that will be good actually rosie interesting mm. okay sounds good yeah All so right. anyone who has um her, done anything to do with spencer if you've read just extracts in school or if you've read book one or all of the fairy queen please let us know because i'm really interested to see like how many people actually do attempt <laughs> this and the is anyone thing. else who hasn't now inspired to or have we completely turned you off? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, hope I, hope, I hope we haven't done that. Yeah, I hope so. It, it's, uh, it is worth the attempt, I think. But, I, mm. yeah, I wonder if it's worth reading the whole thing or if it's just like the book one is kind of sufficient. We'll see. Mm. Yeah, Let's see what people okay. tell us too. Let us know what you think um, and we will look forward to next time getting to book two. We slowly progress through it. <laughs> it will feel like hard. a massive achievement if we get it done yes yes and hopefully it's worth doing slowly so that we do it does it is more enjoyable thanks for watching everyone and see you again next time for book two yeah bye everyone okay. bye